All right, so we got 57 orders going out over the weekend, totaling a little over $1,500 in sales. Stick around to the end of the video to find out what sold. These women's torrid chino pants sold for $10 plus shipping. And this women's skifo sweater sold for $14 plus shipping. And these women's express pants sold for $12.55 plus shipping. It is $13.751. How was the weekend of sales for you guys? What are some things that you're looking to get better in? I think that as a reseller, you always need to be looking for ways to get better, to make improvements to your business, whether it be sourcing or organizing or maybe just getting a little bit more efficient at your processes. You can see here behind me this pit of black bags. That came from a bale that I just sorted a couple days ago. I ended up getting about 400 to 500 pieces out of 2,000 pieces, finding things like Patagonia, North Face, Carhartt, a lot of bread and butter items, and as well as a few vintage items. I pay about 15 cents to 17 cents per pound, though I do need to spend about four hours each week sorting through this massive pile of clothing. So I'm still in debate on whether I should just pay someone to do the sorting for me, and pay a little bit more per cost of goods. It would be going from maybe 25 to 50 cents per item to about a dollar per item, or just continue to do it by myself. You know, my time uh, is valuable, and I really wanna just focus more on the photography and the listing process rather than spending all that time that I could be listing, and now I'm doing the sorting. So I'd rather just almost thinking about just hiring someone to do the sorting for me. So that's been the great debate over the last few weeks. What are you guys looking to do to improve systems in your business? I think it is crucial to always be innovating and improving in your business, no matter where you're at. If you're just selling out of your bedroom, look for ways to be able to sell more efficiently out of that bedroom. If you are struggling to find inventory, start cold calling junk removal services. Start calling mom and pop thrift stores. Start figuring out ways to be able to find more inventory rather than just the traditional methods. I think that that's gonna be really transformative for you as it has been for my business as well. This Nike men's windbreaker sold for $24 plus shipping. I'm just very thankful that people are still continuing to buy jackets, even though it might be lightweight. Do you pick up jackets in the summertime? I still pick up jackets in the summertime and I pick up shorts in the wintertime. I'm still trying to fill out my store with an even amount of items. And if you think about it, it's still always cold somewhere and it's always warm somewhere throughout the year. So especially if you have international shipping turned on and you're part of some type of global shipping program on eBay. So this women's sweater by the brand Gap sold for $10 plus shipping. So, uh, so I just wanna take some time to answer some of your questions. Just that said, where do I get my lights from and what lights am I using for my photography station? Well, let's take a look. They are the newer NL 660 bicolored lights. You can see them right here. Probably not very well. But the nice thing about these lights, easy to use, easy to turn on. They don't take up a lot of space, which I don't have a lot of space for my photography setup. And this just lights everything really nicely. You can adjust the temperature of the lights to maybe a little more cool temperature, maybe to a little warm temperature, depending on your setup and how you want it done but you could find them linked in the description down below. I believe they're about 160 for the pair. They come with the light stand. And as well as if you want a little bit of a softer light, you could also buy some type of soft box that will go around them. I pull these lights back so they're not so intense on my, so they're not like washing out the colors, you know, cause they can get in pretty bright. So I have these at like set to, half power so they're just not washing out a lot of the colors um, but like I said if you just get a soft box it won't be so harsh on your photos so you can get a little bit more color accuracy so like I said you can find it linked down below and if you do make a purchase it does greatly help out the channel and I'm very thankful I know I know laugh all you want folks but these are a pair of old navy jogger pants but they are linen blend sold for eight dollars plus shipping I love selling anything linen or linen blend this time of year. It really does well for me. 
So this is a brand you always should be picking up, and it's the brand Hudson. These are some men's Hudson jeans sold for $46 plus shipping. All right, one of my favorite brands to pick up, whether it's destroyed, thrashed, or in great condition, I don't care. Carhartt pants sold for $20 plus shipping, $14.07. $14.507. So do you pass on brands like Carhartt if they have holes or they're destroyed or have paint stains? Things like Riggs Workwear, anything by the brand Carhartt, are you passing on it or are you picking it up? I found that even if it has paint stains, even if it has holes, it still will sell. And pretty quickly, because you got to think about it, the buyer is looking to work in these pants, not exactly be going out on date night to a fancy dinner. So... Um, yeah, I just listed these maybe a week ago and they sold for $20. So $14,507, we are, it's the last one. Oh, oh my God. Okay. There we go. All right. So we have some big news, wonderful news. If you are getting started on eBay and maybe you're having a hard time figuring out how to price your items, how to title your items and how to list your items, and maybe how to find items to source in general, you can check out linked in the description down below. We're offering a seven day free trial to our eBay coaching program. And you ask Bo, R, who's R? Well, Marcus Dixon with Dixon's Pickens and I have combined as an eBay coaching reseller mentorship to be able to provide you the best value possible. We work with you Monday through Friday, 10 hours a week, he does a morning Zoom call and I do the evening Zoom call, helping you put the same systems and strategies in place that helped us do a little over $320,000 in sales last year, selling pre-owned men's and women's clothing. So you can check it out, linked below. Included in that is access to a reseller spreadsheet as well as a live eBay store review. And if you feel like it's not for you, it's okay. You can cancel before the seven days. Or if you do like the community and you can join dozens of other members getting value, it is just $1 a day after that. So we'd love to see you there. These women's Adriana Goldsmead jeans sold for $15 plus shipping. This men's Nike shirt sold for $12 plus shipping. So I love picking up camo anything. Um, I pick it up regardless of the brand. I just feel like this style and trend is coming back. So these are some Levi's cargo camo shorts sold for $15 plus shipping. And this women's Columbia windbreaker sold for $12 plus shipping. So I've been picking up more dresses lately. Yes, I know dresses, but there is money to be made in all categories. And I believe dresses can be one of the hardest categories to be able to master on eBay with all the variations. But this is just a simple A-line J Crew dress, picked it up for 50 cents and it sold for 12.55 plus shipping. Obviously dresses can go for far more than that if you are looking at certain styles and kind of just cluing into what is in demand during these spring and summer months. But yeah, don't sleep on dresses if that's something that you're kind of looking to expand upon within certain categories for your reselling business. Um, if you can take the time to do the research with dresses, there's good money to be made. So I've picked up a few of these like leather folding wallet carriers by the brand Gurkha and they surprisingly sell really well. This one sold for $65 plus shipping. That folding wallet little carrying case came from a storage unit buyout I did last year. And to my surprise, looking up a lot of these items, you're just kind of in shock of like someone would actually pay that, but it really comes down to brand. So 14409, um, very thankful. What a blessing, you know, to be able to sell items. If you guys saw where I lived, I'm literally on a mountain in the middle of nowhere selling mall brand clothing. So no matter where you may be, you know, middle of Arkansas, middle of the desert, you can still make a full-time living selling the things that you really like to sell wherever you may be. So $65, really happy with that sale. What a blessing. Another great brand is the brand Guess. These are some men's Guess jeans sold for $35 plus shipping. Oh, 
All right, all right. So a combined order. These are just some simple men's Quicksilver sweaters sold for $44.94 plus shipping. So five, six, seven, six. I really stress the importance of picking up similar items, continuing to figure out what is selling in your store and just cluing in on, okay, these items are selling. Maybe I should go and pick them up again. And that is how you can just really make things a little bit easier when it comes to the reselling process. You're not having to worry about picking up anything new or figuring out what is some new brands that you're going to be needing to learn about. You know, just really figure out what is in abundance in your area. And then you can capitalize on picking up those items over and over again, listing those items, and continuing to resell them. So really, once you can figure out what items and what brands are in your area, you're gonna want to probably, you're gonna want to build your foundation based upon those brands. So I have easy access to Nike. I have easy access to outerwear, jackets, rain gear. And those are the items that I'm looking to build the foundation of my business upon. I don't need to be looking out for Hawaiian linen shirts and silk tops. And just because those items are a little bit more difficult to come by when I'm going out sourcing. So maybe you live in Florida, maybe you live in Hawaii, start figuring out what brands are in abundance in that area, searching the left-hand navigation on eBay, and then searching by radius. So you punch in your zip code, search by radius, and then sort from highest to lowest, and you're gonna be able to figure out what other resellers are picking up as well. And that's gonna give you a good idea of like, what to look out for. You know, maybe you're at the thrift store and, and you're still trying to figure out what brands you should be picking up. By doing a little bit of research before you go out sourcing, that's really gonna make a big difference to be able to level up your game and give you give yourself like a competitive advantage over the others that may be kind of slacking in that type of research. All right, this REI kind of performance shirt sold for $12.55 plus shipping. All right, so we had another question come in from Neezy DDB. What percentage do you run your promotions at? So everything in my store, with the exception of maybe Arcteryx and some vintage pieces, I'm gonna be running most of those items at a 10% fixed rate. So the promotions on eBay are so good. And right now with all of the competition and the saturation happening, I highly suggest at least trying to play with the promotions, see how it's gonna affect your business, figure out how it's gonna eat into your margins. But it's something like, you know, you can spend ten, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a year to bring in double, triple, quadruple that number. So if you're spending 20,000 a year in promotions, you have a potential to make up to a hundred grand extra in sales. So. Have you ever heard of products not being advertised? Have you ever heard of products not being marketed? I know eBay does do a lot of the marketing for their items, but as an individual level, especially within clothing, it is so saturated, you might wanna consider maybe doing at least a 2% promotion to really help jumpstart your store and really figure out if that's gonna be something that's right for you. It's not right for everybody, and you can sell items just fine organically, but then you're really gonna to need to focus on picking up those higher in-demand items rather than just a plain Jane L.L. Bean shirt that nobody wants, right? So that's something that you're gonna to need to figure out and what you're gonna to wanna to do going forward in your business. So one of the reasons why I love this inventory system so much is it just makes the pooling process seamless, you know? You're losing minimal items. You're able to pack these items very quickly. So 8284, these men's Polo Ralph Lauren new with tag jeans sold for $30 plus shipping. And it just makes things so easy to be able to just know where things at. You know, you have everything sorted by SKU number here in the rows. You just know where everything is when you have the order come in on eBay. And yes, you can find all this linked in the description down below from the racks to the boxes to the clear poly bags. Very thankful for anything that you decide to make a purchase on. Greatly helps out the channel. And if you're looking to, maybe you're in bins and you want to really build upon your reselling business, this is gonna be the way to go as it is modular and you're able to just keep adding 
racks as you grow your business. Man, we've been selling a ton of these windbreakers and soft shell jackets. This one's an interesting one. And these this brand typically goes for much higher, but this had some stains on it. Uh, by the brand Frogs Togs. This is just a men's windbreaker. Sold for $15 plus shipping. 11497 Where are you, 11497 We are... There we go. So, I don't know. Maybe the rain has been happening all over the country, but this is the third soft shell windbreaker we've sold today. So another material that I'm always picking up is silk. Silk, cashmere, wool, linen. I'm picking up all those materials regardless of the brand. This is an Anne and Frank women's blouse made out of 100% silk, sold for $16 plus shipping. So this Nike Oregon Ducks jersey, number nine, whoever that was, sold for $22 plus shipping. It is $13,475. So maybe you live by a stadium, by a college team, by a professional team. Maybe you'd want to consider adding some of those items into your store. I live kind of somewhat close to the University of Oregon, so a lot of Ducks gear, a lot of Nike gear, a lot of Oregon Beavers gear. I do pick it up if it is less than a dollar. I'm not picking up all of it because some of it is priced crazy, and I'm not a crazy person to be paying five, 10, $15 for a symbol jersey. This came from the bulk bale that I'm able to source on a monthly basis. So if I see anything that's usually Oregon Ducks related, and especially if it's made by Nike, I'm gonna be picking it up to add into my store, even though it may take some time to sell since we are in the off season. These men's gap jeans sold for $24 plus shipping. This buckle men's pearl snap shirt sold for $15 plus shipping. I'm picking up most things that are pearl snaps, especially Western shirts. Do you pick up pearl snap shirts? This Maurice's sweater, yes, I said the brand Maurice's, sold for $14 plus shipping. The reason why I picked this up is it is a 2X. Plus sized women's clothes sell better for me, obviously, than small, medium, or even large. So if you're able to find Maurice's maybe in a really large size, like 2X, 3X, 4X, plus size, they're gonna do better than most, especially since the sell-through rate is a little bit higher than those smaller sizes. So everyone should be looking out for this brand, the Dixon Clothing Company. They make men's flannel pearl snap shirts. This is the model Pensacola, sold for $62 plus shipping. These shirts can typically range between $60 to upwards of $100. This came from a bulk bale that I bought last week and found a couple of these Dixon flannels so if you're figuring out the buy cost, you're looking at maybe 50 cents. So turning 50 cents into $62, oh boy, it's a good time to be alive and to be reselling. This is uh, a really good quality brand. You can even just feel by the texture of the material, it's just better quality. So beautiful shirt, happy to get this going and to be able to put this back into the economy where someone's actually gonna wear it. All right, so this Rockin' Republic men's jacket, it's more like a canvas blazer, sold for $112 plus shipping. It is an international order. It says it's in closet. So that's gonna take a second to find. All right, so that took a lot longer than it should have, but this is a really cool blazer. And I love this brand, Rockin' Republic. The jeans do okay, um, but this jacket, also from that storage unit I did last year. It's got some of these embroidered patches on it. The original buyer paid $365. But you know, I'm just so thankful to be selling these jackets. I don't really have too much more space to be holding jackets. So I've been, you know, accepting a lot more offers lately that I probably wouldn't be accepting during the winter time. But just happy to get this out of here. I had it listed for almost a year. And, you know, I have a lot of men's blazers. So I'm definitely willing to take a lot lower offers on those as less and less people are kind of dressing up and going into the office nowadays. So maybe men's blazers, you know, I'm typically going to be taking lower offers on those just to get them moving and taking those profits and investing them to buying more bales. So I don't typically pick up this brand unless it is like a plus size. So these are some Land's End leggings, but they are a 2X plus size, sold for $17.95 plus shipping. 
So that's the difference is like some brands I typically would just stay away from, right? I just will run away, don't want to see it. Land's End is one of those brands. It is a plus size. So this had just been listed for a couple weeks and sold for 18 bucks. 14, four, six, seven. Just really happy, thankful that you can uh, really figure out what you do want to sell and then continue to pick up those items. So just a regular pair of leggings that came from a bulk buyout, turning a couple cents into 18 bucks. What are some strategies that you're trying to implement in your business? Do you really try to go for plus size clothing? Are you seeing that trend kind of moving in that direction? Seems to me like those small sizes, especially like skinny jeans, women's size two, four, six, eight even in jeans can really sell much slower than picking up like a plus size 2X, 3X. So what do you guys do? This women's L.L. Bean t-shirt sold for $11.55 plus shipping. All right, so I love picking up Levi's, as you all know, but these are a pair of vintage Levi's shorts sold for $24 plus shipping. And as well as these women's compression shorts by the brand Under Armour sold for $17.95 plus shipping. So this is always a good brand to be picking up. It is an Ariat shirt sold for $17.95 plus shipping, but most known for like their Ariat cowboy boots and Ariat jeans. Those obviously sell a lot better. But if I do see an Ariat shirt from time to time, I will add it to my store. All right, so these Calvin Klein shorts, kind of a long Bermuda style, sold for $19.95 plus shipping. $7.944. Way back here. Another storage unit purchase. You know, this had probably sat around for maybe eight months, nine months in my store. Really just happy to get these items out of here. These Calvin Klein men's pants sold for $31.96 plus shipping from a repeat buyer. So another great way to be putting in the same items over and over again and continuing to get repeat buyers. So 9560, there we go. So these were new with tags. And look at that, as I scroll down, whoop-de-doo, we have another bulk order from the same buyer. Same Calvin Klein pants. Sold for 56 plus shipping. So let's find these. Uh, 9564. I was just down here. Four. There we go, one of them. So yeah, all of these, like I've said before, um, especially when they're new with tags, are coming from a storage unit buyout. Um, I bought out 5,000, 6,000 pieces of new with tag clothing that I just got from posting a simple Facebook ad. And this storage unit manager had contacted me and she goes, come take a look. And she opened up all the storage units and you're kind of like in a daze for a moment. Like, what is going on here? Um, apparently some guy was quite the shopper and hoarder. And he just kept going to these malls and buying tons and tons of new with tag clothing. Things like Calvin Klein, Ralph Lauren, Kenneth Cole, a lot of bread and butter items. So um, I immediately made an offer and bought it all. And I would say probably about two months ago is when I finished going through it all. And not all of it, because I still have some handbags to go through. But most of the clothing is now done and listed in the store. But boy, you really need to be prepared when you are buying bulk because it may be something you're getting into that you're like, whoa. And it really helped me not have to buy inventory for about eight months. And it took me that time to really find a good source. In that meantime, I was always trying to strategize how can I improve upon my sourcing because I know things like this don't always happen right you never it's rare it's a rare thing so I my ideal situation was like finding some type of rag house or some type of way that I can pay people to source for me and bring the inventory to me and I would say up until about January is when I really made that shift in my business to be able to buy bulk bales 
and be able to sort through them to find those higher quality items because I wanted to continue to keep up with the quality that I was continuing to put in my store. And it was just a lot more time consuming to have to go to the Goodwill bins, the thrift stores, to be able to sort through all these clothing and to put those items in my store. So I'd rather just buy more in bulk and be able to do it on my own time. I live about an hour away from the next nearest thrift store anyways, so it does help me save a little bit more time driving. Another pretty decent brand is this brand Wilson's Leather, and it is just a simple men's leather jacket, sold for $40 plus shipping. Here's kind of what the brand tag looks like, if you can see it. There, Wilson's Leather. Just a really solid brand to be on the lookout for, um, most notably for their jackets but a really good solid brand. This did take eight months to sell though. So getting back into the questions, Belke Smash Flips ask, is my space heated or air conditioned? He's wondering um, since his inventory is stored in his garage, what climate issues could he be facing going forward? So if you could see kind of up there somewhere, I have a heater installed to at least keep it above freezing out here. You've seen me bundled up over and over time and time again. It's because I live in the Pacific Northwest and it does get a little bit cold here, not negative 50 like in North Dakota, but it does get cold, right? So I have a lot of my clothing stored in these poly bags. I really just make sure that I keep an eye on the relative humidity. I have these thermometers placed all throughout the shop and um, my main concern for storing items in cold areas is at least keep a heater above maybe 40, 45, 55 degrees in your warehouse and have these fans that are all along the ground here. I have about four of them that continue to move air and circulate air all around the shop. That is one of the more important things. And then if you do live in a place that has some high humidity, you know, maybe you, you have some high humidity and fans aren't cutting it, you can also pick up a few dehumidifiers that I have here just to be able to keep that relative humidity going past 70, I think is a really good cutoff point. If you can keep your relative humidity below 70, it's gonna help things from not molding. You know, that's gonna be one of the worst situations to have is you have all these clothes stored away and you have mold. So really number one thing is keeping airflow moving. Do whatever you have to do. Install huge commercial fans, install a shop heater to keep that temperature warm, and then have air constantly moving. And then if you, it's not bringing down the relative humidity, we might want to look into getting like some kind of commercial dehumidifier, but that's just kind of from my experience and you may live in a different area. So that's what I'm just doing uh, in the Pacific Northwest where it does rain a lot. So another women's linen top by the brand Flax sold for $10 plus shipping. This is a pretty good brand to be picking up. Could have sold it for more, but this did have a few spots on it. Hey, 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 another dress sold by the brand Max Studio. This sold for a whopping $9 plus shipping. All right, so like I said, there was a lot of backpacks and handbags in that storage unit, which is kind of what's in all these bags here. Um, you know, a lot of simple bags, new tags. This is uh, Dita's backpack, sold for $20 plus shipping. I don't sell bags, so I do list these kind of in batches, um, just so I can stay active in those categories when I do list these bags. So, um, for example, like, I'll take photos of maybe 20, 30 bags one day, and then I'll just list one a day in my from my draft bank. So that way I just stay really active and consistent over the course of 30 days in that category so I can get those consistent sales. But if you do slow down listing in that category, you'll notice that, that you'll get less and less impressions um, by not remaining consistently active in those categories. So originally 65 bucks, but if you are a clothing reseller, obviously that doesn't mean anything. So happy just to get $20 out of this and being able to have someone use this backpack as well rather than just sitting doing nothing. All right, so I definitely don't recommend picking up this brand and that is the brand Sonoma. And this is a women's sweater, sold for $12.95 plus shipping, surprisingly. But I did like it because it had this paisley pattern on it. Remember paying less than a dollar for each of my items. So happy for this sale, but I don't recommend when you're just starting out picking up things like Old Navy, Sonoma, Trident, Time and True, Croft and Barrow, brands like that. 
If you do wanna know what brands that I am looking out for on a daily basis, you could check out this video here where it goes over the top 50 brands on my brand list that I'm constantly on the lookout for. I think it could be really helpful for you the next time you go outsourcing. I hope you all have a blessed rest of the day and take care.